Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. So, as usual, we're going to talk non-spoilery thoughts and opinions up front, and then move over to the spoiler section where we can talk in more detail. So, with that being said, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's begin. So, Breach of Peace is the debut novella by Daniel Green. So, when an imperial family is butchered, officers of God are called in to investigate the crime. And during the investigation, there are some things that are discovered that opens up more mysteries and more questions about the things that are going on that are all tied into this murder. And some of the information that comes to light leads the main character, Clid, the primary investigator who we're fo uh, following, leads her to start to distrust even people who are, she's working with. And that's kind of, you know, very much not done in this uh, police precinct. Well, let me start off by saying I really, really enjoyed this story. It's very short and contained. At least it felt very short to me. It's very well contained and very well centralized. So that allows for a lot of development in a very short amount of time. Because I believe the page count is like, what, 140 pages? And to have only that short amount of pages to develop an actual story, like, to me is incredibly challenging. Because I feel like you need at least that many pages to fill out the world. To kind of give context about everything that's going on, in a, I guess, in a greater story. But one of the tricks about writing a short story, that or writing a novella that's different than a short story, is that you basically need to write a short story that exists in the context of a larger story that promises more information about the larger story. And I think Daniel did a great job with that concept here. So Daniel did a great job in keeping the story contained to this small number of pages. He plotted out the story very well. It allows for really good pacing. It makes it all just comes together so much more. And it leaves you with this feeling of like desperately wanting to know what happens later. Wanting to know more. Wanting to know more about the conspiracy that's um, introduced in here and stuff. So, so I am really looking forward to the next one. I may be wrong in this assumption, but I also think Daniel might be a fan of the Star Wars movie Rogue One. Because some of the the way the story kind of goes feels kind of familiar to that. And it's it feels like the same kind of thing. Like magnifying a singular a singular event to become its own story. As, you know, opposed to trying to explain all this other greater story and stuff. So I really like that aspect of it. Because Rogue One is my favorite of the most recent Star Wars movies. By focusing on one singular situation, Daniel was able to flesh out these characters within the context of that situation so completely. So you don't feel like any of the characters that you're reading about are like half finished or half explained or anything like that. It's honestly very impressive the way he does expository dialogue because you can tell it. I mean, I feel like most people who read a lot and kind of analyze um, writing and stuff like that could see it very clearly. But it's done in such a subtle way that even while recognizing it, I still fell completely into it and it was just seamless. So this idea of expository dialogue, he does really well so like each character interaction they're talking about the case and they're talking about the situation they're dealing in but everything that they say gives you a little bit of information about the world about the way everything works about the context about the relationships between other people it's just done so well and it's definitely something i feel like i need to work on for my own writing as i've already said this story feels very complete but it also feels like we're just getting a small taste of this greater world that he wants to explain and you know tell us all about so this novella is very impressive. I want to wrap up the non-spoiler section by saying I definitely recommend it. And I'm very happy I get to see more booktubers publishing their works. It gives me a lot of inspiration and a lot of hopes that I'll finish my stuff one day and probably get it published as well. So I guess let me sum up the non-spoiler section by saying I really think this novella is really well done. I like that the story is self-contained. All the characters are contained and they're well fleshed out within their context. We understand everything we need to understand about them. I think the pacing is really well done. The introduction of this conspiracy is really well done and it leaves enough breadcrumbs to make you just desperately want to know more. So I think it's really well done. So let's go ahead and jump over to the spoiler section. So spoiler warning for Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. 
So the first thing I want to talk about in the spoiler section is the balls Daniel had to do what he did in this book. And that's kind of why I brought up the Rogue One comparison because he did what they did in Rogue One and he killed everybody. I thought that was so awesome and so ballsy because especially since I, I could be completely wrong about this, but my assumption is that this novella takes place in that larger world that he was telling us about, about his um, other magic system in the video he posted. So based on that, I understand that these characters may not have had much to do with the main characters in his, you know, larger story. So he was able to basically take a singular event within the world and within the context of the main thing he wants to tell and expand it and kind of blow it up and make it into like a practice novella, which I thought was just so well done. And the fact that it is like so self-contained and these characters apparently aren't going to have much to do with the greater story that he's crafting he's able to kill them all off. So it just works beautifully. And I kind of reached that conclusion at the point when Clid and Sam kiss and he explicitly says they kiss for the last time. I was like, okay, so clearly her husband's going to die. So the idea that then Chapman gets turned into this, this monster thing and then she ends up getting hunted down and killed at the end. Like, I thought it was just so well done. Because from jump, from the moment he introduced Chapman, I started to suspect Chapman. So, it, for one, because of the nature of the book and it's smaller and all that stuff, I figured he could be the only, you know, he's the only one that could be, you know, to, to basically progress the story. Because small stories, you only introduce the characters you need to use. So by him having Chapman be, like, have multiple twists with Chapman by having him be a rebel and then having him basically manipulate the police force to go in to kind of help deal with this secondary issue that they're all now going to have. And the implications that these people that were doing, like, they were the good guys, but, like, it was the other good guys that interfered with these quote-unquote good guys and they were doing stuff that's not technically good. So the good guys are technically doing bad things and then the good guys that we know are kind of being the bad guys because they're interfering with military stuff and it's like i love how it kind of just switches it's like good guy bad guy not good guy bad guy it's all perception and then like they're being lied to and other people are being lied to so it just kind of opens up all this gray space this you know the anointed and the people that are you know positioned basically by god or whatever aren't necessarily you know awesome and benevolent and all this kind of stuff and i assume we're going to learn more about all the other stuff later on and it just it, it brings up these ideas and concepts that exist in fantasy or this kind of contemporary kind of pseudo fantasy because this the setting of this world reminds me so much of Mistborn Era 2. It feels like a world that would have been a huge epic fantasy world, but they've reached a level of modernization where they've got guns and all this kind of stuff. So that's really very much what it felt like. It kind of like what Bright was trying to do, but failed at. <laughs> Also, the nature of the conspiracy that goes on in this reminds me a little bit of Sufficiently Advanced Magic. So, spoiler warning also for Sufficiently Advanced Magic. In the first book, we find out that they're trying to create human god beasts, which is, you know, just hyper-powerful, magically enhanced humans and stuff, it, you know, with all these extra powers and whatnot. And it kind of feels like that's what's going on in this story. Like, they're trying to create artificial anointed ones, the ones that aren't chosen by God or whatever, however the deity situation works. But there's people who have access to whatever that goo stuff is and they're using it to create these artificial ones which is basically what happened to chapman and he apparently was reacting to it a lot better than other people had so he probably might even come back later so i just really like it i like it a lot there's a lot of little stuff in here to pick at and play with and stuff this is right in my wheelhouse Daniel did a great job with this story. I really like it a lot. And I think it just basically further solidifies why I ended up subscribing to his channel. Because we clearly have similar taste. And I'm so happy that his writing style jives with my taste as much as it does. Because I really like this. And I'm definitely going to be picking up the next one. And pretty much anything else that takes place in this world. So you got a constant reader there, Daniel. So let me go ahead and wrap up this review by saying, have you all read Breach of Peace? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. So remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you all next time. Peace.